Yes, welcome back to our next lesson. Our lesson today is on simplifying expressions. We already defined what simplifying was earlier, <clears throat> and now let's dive into the full-blown um, idea of simplifying. Today's mindset message is, math makes sense, so expect it to. And I know that you may have had an experience that doesn't really agree with that, or maybe the other mindset messages that, we'll, that we've had or, or that we will have, but really try to trust me, trust yourself, and um, expect math to, math to make sense. That, that doesn't mean it's not going to be hard work. That doesn't mean it's not going to be confusing at first, often, or sometimes, or whatever. That's okay, but just push through it. You can do it. Uh, today's learning goals first are to identify what like terms are, we'll talk about that, and then to simplify algebraic expressions. Uh, prior knowledge to have is uh, variables and expressions and the previous vocab we've learned, of course. Um, the distributive property, we'll actually talk about that more though in our first example. And then still the order of operations and number tricks and those things. Okay. So like I said, our first example, actually our first two examples are going to focus on the distributive property of numbers. You may be very familiar with it, you may have kind of forgotten that. Whatever the case, these two examples are really going to help us understand and see why it works. Again, in algebra that is so important to really understand algebra and be an algebraic thinker. It's not just about using it, it's about thinking why it works and making sure we understand the various ways of, of seeing things like this. So this is a really cool thing. We're going to just step through these together uh, to show you. So I'm not going to ask you to pause for this one. Use this array to show that 4 times 50 plus 3, so you see the order here is saying add 50 and 3 and then multiply by 4, um, is the same as 4 times 50 plus 4 times 3. So what we're saying is multiply the 4 by the 50 and by the 3 and then add afterwards. So it actually is weird because it represents a different order, but if we do it in this order or this order, it's always going to be equal. That's what's kind of surprising here. Now, you might have seen this, and this is going to likely be helpful, to actually see how to apply the distributive property. This 4 multiplies in with the 50 and then separately in with the 3. Right? That's where we have the 4 times 50 and the 4 times 3. That's how to correctly apply the distributive property. But again, thinking about the why of how it works will help it stick in our minds better. So this is going to be kind of cool. Let's actually take a look at number one. Here's an array. An array is kind of like just like a block list or uh, like if you see sometimes vegetables or fruit in the supermarket that are in a rectangular form or stacked up, we also call that an array. Anyway, so think to yourself, what does this really mean? This is like saying four 50 plus threes. Does that make sense to you? The cool thing about that is that if I want to think, hmm, where do I see four 50 plus threes? Well, first of all, let's think, where is there a 50 plus three? Oh, well, here's a 50 plus three. And in fact, how many groups of them are there? There's four groups of 50 plus 3. So this side here matches the orange. Now, of course, we've taken care of all the total of all the numbers, right? Here's another cool way of visualizing the same thing to show why the distributive property works. This is instead saying four 50s separate from four 3s, right? Four 50s plus four 3. Well, can you view this thing a little differently to see four 50s and four 3s? If we look horizontally, there's four fifties plus four threes. Isn't that kind of neat? Okay, so there's a really useful way to help us understand why distribu uh, distribution actually works with numbers. And the good thing is it's always going to work. And that would make sense because I didn't have to use four. I could have used many more columns here or I even could have used more rows and still using this organization, remember, organize your work in helpful ways, right, uh, will be equivalent and it'll still agree with it. So that's pretty cool how that worked. Well, another way to show this is actually by connecting it to area of a rectangle. You can think back to uh, our, one of our past lessons with, uh, we did the area of a garden that you had. Well, let's say instead we've got this different situation and 
Um, if I have a rectangle that is four, and I'm not going to make it perfectly realistic, but uh, let's say this, I guess I should make it kind of more realistic, but let's say this is, can you see that this represents, now 50 plus 3 is 53, right? So this whole length of the whole rectangle is 53. So 4 times 50 plus 3 is the same as saying, because do you agree the whole big rectangle is the same as if I separated it into this rectangle plus that little one? So this is the same as 4 times 50, and this here is the same as 4 times 3, right? So we can clearly see that the whole rectangle area is 4 times 50 plus 3. But it's also true that if we did them separately, instead of one whole rectangle, we could think of it as 4 times 50 and then adding the 4 times 3 to it. So that's another way of actually showing that distributive property. Essentially this 4 distributes into, right? To distribute means to like hand things out kind of, the 50 and then into the 3. So again, if we apply the distributive property, you can kind of think of it as sharing that 4 amongst everything in there that's added together. So that would be something that's useful for us for simplifying. Now let's actually jump into our examples on simplifying number 4 from our last lesson. Uh, but in this case, our instructions are different. Last time, we were asked to choose some starting numbers, or we can call them inputs, and calculate what is the final number, what comes out, right? And the ones I did, and you did your own afterwards, but 6 gave me 12, 1 gave me 2, and 2.5 gave me 5. Now, based on that, think about the pattern happening. How could I get from the input to the output, maybe in a quicker way than like all these sequence of steps, or at least based on what this looks like? See, we haven't actually proven this is true yet, but you can maybe have a hunch or a suspicion, your gut feeling. My gut feeling tells me that if I have an input, it seems like it's always going to be double. It's always going to be times two, or at least all the ones I calculated. So I'm guessing something here. I put a question mark here, but if that's x, I'm thinking maybe it's 2 times x, okay? Now, for now, I'm just going to put a question mark there, because I'm, I'm doing what a mathematician does. I'm seeing a pattern, and I'm saying, hmm, I wonder if that's the pattern. But then you, if you really want to be sure, you have to go forward and prove that it's true. And that's what this will do for us when we simplify this expression. Now that we've talked about the distributive property, that could actually be helpful for us here. There's actually many ways we could simplify this. Maybe we'll look at a couple of them together. Now, I invite you, if you feel up to it, to pause and do this on your own, and then come back. Or if it's something you're just really um, wanting to see yourself first, you can just continue on here. So one way to do this would be straight up start by distributing the 4x, uh, the 4 into this x minus 3. And remember, x just represents a changeable number, so it's still a number, and all these properties that we know still apply, so we can do distribution. So this gives me 4 times x, uh, technically it's plus 4 times negative 3, so that's going to be 4 times negative 3 is going to give me a minus 12. And then I have a plus 12 on top there, all over 2. Well this is interesting, because if I have a minus 12 plus 12, uh, that's like digging a hole 12 feet deep and then filling it in with 12 feet of dirt. I'm back at level again. I'm at zero, right? So technically this is 4x plus zero. Maybe you don't think you need to, which you don't necessarily to write the zero, but um, this gives me 4x over 2, and 4 divided by 2 gives me 2x. Aha! Our suspicion was right. So my question mark there actually turns out to be not needed, because it really is true. Now, like I said, there's other ways you could have gone about simplifying this. Uh, maybe you could have, um, actually you might have realized that this 4 is divisible by 2, and so is that 12. So I actually could have maybe, uh, but remember, you can't just cross out the 4 and the 2 only. It has to be every piece in the sum. So. Uh, in fact, it actually, you know what would be easier for us to do instead of thinking of that way is 
this four actually can undistribute himself from everything. So it actually could be seen as four uh, times x minus three plus, uh, if I take a four out of a 12, it's a three. And then that's all gonna be over two. So I took a four out of there. It's kind of like a complicated distribution. And it's okay if that's a little confusing for you. You could rewatch this or um, it, it's, it's okay. Um, and then that four and that two actually cancel out and they become two over one. And since that's over one, it's just two times x minus three plus three. And minus three plus three is zero again. So this is just two x plus zero, which is just two x. And that's another way to get it. But either way, it's cool that simplifying helps us realize, wait a minute, there's a pattern here. So instead of going through all these steps, Instead, maybe it's better to simplify first and then we can work with an expression because it just makes it easier to do the calculation. And we guarantee that the results will just always be the same because we didn't actually alter uh, anything. It's just rewritten in an equivalent way. So that's really neat. This brings us to something actually because another thing we see when we're simplifying is uh, the idea of what we call like terms. So another vocab word we're running into right now, when the variables are the same in two terms, we say they are like terms, okay? And like terms can be added uh, or subtracted, I'm gonna say combined, combined by adding or subtracting, okay, to one term. I should have written this up there before, but it's important to think, uh, to know that we can combine with adding and subtracting if there are two like terms. So number four says, are they like terms or not? So we have A and B. Well, if we just go by this definition, if the variables are the same, they're like terms. So this should be pretty easy to answer. Does this have the same variable in it? Yeah, it does. How about part B? Nope. Now, part of this is, remember how we said they can be combined using addition or subtraction. This is super important, actually. Don't, uh, uh, don't leave that part out to one term, because multiplying actually changes things. We can put them in one term by multiplying, but adding, the only way to add and have them become one term is if the variable is the same. So, and, and we will talk more deeply about that because there's more to it, but for now, this is all that we need. So if I have two X's plus three X's, I kind of think of it as a, how many X's do I have? Oh, well, in total, there are five X's, right? The good thing is our distribution rule in reverse is helpful for us to see this here because watch, if this x, it's in common, it leaves the two plus three out there, right? Because if I did it the other way, x times two and then x times three gives me this. So distribution helps us understand like terms. And then two plus three, of course, is just five. So it is just five x. Uh, the problem with this is there is nothing in common between those two terms. And so these guys, the best you're gonna get here to simplify them, well, is not doing anything. This is as good as it's gonna get if they're not like terms, okay? So we'll go on to our home stretch. I forgot to mention one quick thing about like terms. Since these two different variables represent um, different changeable numbers. Now, they could be the same, but they also very likely could be different then it doesn't really make sense to say two x's plus three y's equals like five somethings because these things have a different size than these things do. If I have three y's, of course I can just say three y. I don't have to say y plus y plus y. And the same if I have two x's. But since these could be different sizes, this line segments maybe can help you visualize why they aren't like terms and why we can't do anything more with this to add it and make it be a, a expressed in one single term. Um, last one here. I do want you for these to pause and do them yourself. Um, actually, I'm going to tell you what values to put in for x in a moment. So actually, just do number four yourself, and then we'll look together at five, and then we'll be done. 
Okay, let's check your answers for example number four. Uh, for this one, definitely distributing first would be helpful. So I have 3x plus 3 times 2 is 6 plus 5x, which gives me 8x plus 6 because 3x and 5x are like terms. Uh, there's technically no variable with 6 there, so it's going to stay all on its own. How about part B? It looks like we have right away some like terms. This has a B, but there is, there's nothing else that has a B in it, so I can say uh, 8a, right? 3a plus 5a. And then 4b and 6 are all alone as well, so really there's not a whole lot we can do. Just one step there for that one. Well, C is going to be kind of the same. We have two variables, but <clears throat> maybe kind of combining parts A and B because I will want to distribute first and get 5x plus 5y plus 3x minus 4y. So 5x plus 3x gives me 8x. 5y minus 4y gives me positive still um, 1y. And you can write the 1, but you probably also are familiar with if we just have one of something, we, uh, we often don't write the one there necessarily. But it's not wrong if you want to write the one, so it doesn't really matter. But 8x plus y. Um, and then the last one, uh, well, there's, this one I chose on purpose because there's something really cool about ones like this that might help us. Remember, we like if we can take shortcuts as much as possible, and as long as they're correct, right? Uh, and we understand how they work. You don't want to do things without understanding them. That happens in math class a lot, especially in elementary school, I find. Teachers will tell kids, like, oh, just do it this way or something. But you really want to make sure you understand how things work. So, two things. You could distribute both of these and then just combine all the like terms together. No problem. In fact, that's likely what you did. But I'm going to share with you a little math secret here. I want you to see that this x minus 2 and that x minus 2 are actually the same as each other. And you could think of those very things themselves as a like term. Because think, it's really saying I have 6 x minus 2s plus 3 more x minus 2s. So how many x minus 2s do I have? Well, there's 6 of them plus 3 more of them. So this is 9 x minus 2s. Now we could just stop here, because if we did it one more step, it's going to be uh, no more simple technically. But you may have your answer uh, as if this was distributed. So if we want, we could also say 9x minus 18. So if you, even if you did it the other way, you should have ended up with 9x minus 18. But this is a cool little thing to keep in mind. An entire expression can be thought of as a variable and have like terms as long as it's identical of an expression there. So that's a cool thing. So our last thing that we're going to get into here, uh, I need to check some of the numbers that I chose. Okay, so let's actually look at evaluating this expression for x equals 10, x equals negative 5, and then x equals negative 7. I want to remind you guys that to evaluate an expression means to find the value of. What that means essentially for us is what you might think of as plugging it in, right? So if 10 is plugged in, and this is weird because it's not like a number trick, uh, it's not an easy number trick because normally we have like choose a number and then do this, 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 this. But there's two places with an x, so if we thought of it as a number trick, you'd have to like separately have choose a number and like do something different, which is kind of weird, right? Um, you can certainly pa uh, pause right now if you wanted to and go for it, but I'm going to share with you another little mathematical secret here. If we can make things easier, we like to, right? Same as before. What's this whole topic about today? Simplifying expressions. If you could find a simpler way to write this expression that requires fewer steps and fewer calculations, we're going to get the same answers, and then we can plug in afterwards. You see that little trick? So why don't you go ahead and think about that with me, and let's do it together. This is actually the same as, let's see, uh, 8x and then minus 3, let's distribute that, minus 3x, 3 times 5 is 15. Please be aware of the negatives when we're working with these, okay? And then a plus 2. So, the final simplification, 8x minus 3x is 
5x, negative 15 plus 2. Remember, it's almost like uh, we have a hole 15 feet deep and we fill it with 2 feet of dirt. So how deep is it now? Oh, it's now negative 13 feet deep, right? We, we've made it less deep. So anyway, isn't it cool that this long expression is actually the same as just 5x minus 13? So instead, it's easier if we actually just do that calculation first. So let's do it. 5 times 10 minus 13 is going to be, um, I'll just do it in my head, 50 minus 13 is 37. And this is going to be 5 times negative 5 minus 13. Oh, this is going to be a negative one. That gives me negative 25 minus 13 is, let me use equal signs here, um, negative 38, and then when x is negative 7, I get uh, 5 times negative 7 minus 13, and negative 35 minus 13, and that's going to give me negative 48. Okay? So, there is the end of today's lesson on simplifying expressions, and we'll see you next lesson.